So, in this service, in case you're here for the first time, this is our relationship month, and this is the only month we'll practically do this. We'll kind of do, teach different things. So, in the first three services, we're really focusing on teaching on how to make your relationship better and how to make your marriage better. And I want to say something. Now, for all of you that are single in this service, you're like, oh, wow, but I'm not married. The good thing about knowledge is this, you know, um, when you know, eventually when you need it, it can be pulled out of you. That's the first thing about knowledge. The second thing is that it's, you can never be prepared enough for the relationship ahead of you. And some of you that have great marriages said, oh, wow, I don't need all of this. What it does is that when your friends have marital issues, they come to you, you can actually be able to give them good counsel, not just based on what you know, but this is the word of God. And the third thing it does, if you've gone through a very terrible patch and you're like, um, I don't want to hear marriage, you know, I don't want all those kind of things. Remind me of something that's negative. You know, what this kind of teaching tells you is this. He gives you a good picture to hear about. Because every day you watch all the bad news of this divorce that broke this other person's head and you have a good picture. So if you open up your heart, it can kind of make you sit in a good light. It can make you sit in a good light. Hallelujah. And if all of you are married, that's a great content for you. Um, already I got a little feedback from, from um, social media. And if this message blessed you all of you on social media, type in your feedback, all of you on um, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Type, get your friends to join, share with your friends. Let them join us as we preach the word of god today so today i'm talking about making your marriage and relationship better so let's turn our bibles to second samuel chapter 6 and verse 16. second samuel chapter 6 and in verse 16. and it's amazing because i've never gotten to half of my outline this is the way all the things always turn out to be you know they always turn out this way all the sundays you know and pastor just tired of me already praise the lord you know because this is the way it's always like Second Samuel chapter 6. So making your relationship better. If you want to call it another title, changing a disappointing relationship or marriage. If you want to change a very disappointing relationship or marriage, what do you do? And, and, and today, if it comes to your mind, there's a friend of you that you know, write down their name after the service and then the link. Or you can even tell them in service, bring out your phone and just say, you know what, you can watch right now. All right. So Second Samuel chapter 6 verse 16. So before I teach, let me give you context. So in the Old Testament, um, the Old Testament is not like the New Testament. The Old Testament, the where God was, was not everywhere. God's presence was in the temple and was really built around the Ark of God. So the Ark of God was a big deal. It was really built in the holiest of places, in the holiest of holies, built around the Ark of God. That was where God's presence was. Okay, so that's how, where God's presence was. And um, God's presence was so powerful that when Israel got into trouble, if they carried that Ark into where there was trouble you know what that happened they will supernaturally have victory amen but in the new testament the ark of god is not something it's we because god's presence is now in us today so as we move around we are the ark of the lord we have the ark of the lord so but long and such long and short story in the old testament um israel had lost the ark to battle and David, being someone that was passionate after God, was trying to bring back the ark. After many failed attempts to bring back the ark, the ark eventually came back home. So this is the story of when the return of the ark. So let's read together. Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 16. And as the ark of God came into the city of David, Michael, David had the wife called Michael. Michael was one of Saul's daughters, the former king of Israel. Looked through the window and saw David leaping i thought someone was going to drum for me or something like that he said david some can someone get on the drum you know do we have someone there you know he said david was leaping you know he was leaping and dancing you know i have problem with people that will just watch church online and watch from their bed listen to me it's not a bed issue it's a praise and worship issue praise god it's not a you, some of you will come to church and when you come to just like a pendulum listen to me the king of israel the most important but he was he was leaping he was leaping and shouting i'm sorry if you think we're extravagant but there's a pattern to praise and worship it's amazing because you think that why are they shouting and singing they with a jackpot but when you're watching asna and you're watching man U and you're watching liverpool you get extra and you think that is normal but when i'm praising jehovah the one that put breath in my nostril the strength behind my life you think that's not normal listen to me that's very normal for me all the time you watch liverpool they never they don't even acknowledge you as a fan 
Every time you shall say, Hey, go say, man, man, you hey, ah, that's funny. Hey, 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 they don't even know you. What about my Jesus? Hey, 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 hey. So it's so when people think that you're uncivilized for being expressive about God, they lack spiritual understanding. And there's nothing, my expression of God, there's nothing. You can't even compare it that way. So the Bible says this. Good. The Bible says, and they brought in the hack of God and set it in the place in the midst of the temple that David had pitched in. And look at the next thing David, David did. And David did not only dance, because dancing is a type of worship. The Bible says, and David offered burnt offering. And this is why we give. Why do we give? Listen to me. It's enough to say, Lord, I worship you. But every time we give, our giving itself, it's a form of worship. It's a form of worship. Because what is it giving me? You see, if I say, Lord, I worship you with myself. God, you say, Lord, I don't belong to myself. I give it to you. When I give my money, you say, God, all the finances I have, if you didn't give me wisdom, skill, and opportunity, I will not be able to do this. So I offer it back to you. And that's why we fight. The title is this. I'm acknowledging that God is at work. Yeah. Why do we pay taxes? We pay taxes because we're saying that it's the infrastructure of the government that we use and for the infrastructure they provide. Why do we give tithe? Lord, for the infrastructure that you provide in my life, I'm giving you thanks for it. Glory to God. So the reason why we have a difficult fight time is that we come from a system where people get the money, tax money, and don't do anything. So the same thing, they're like, you know, we're not used to it. I understand that. But the reason why we fight is that we say, Lord, there's so much blessings you provided for. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. And so, so, and, and so let's go. And David provided bond offering and peace offering before the... <laughs> before, <laughs> and provided peace offering and he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. And he dealt amongst the people all this and this and this and this. Verse, verse 20. So David had given offering and dance, you know. And verse 20. And David returned to bless his house. And Micah, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David. And he said, how glorious was the king of Israel today. You know, I don't even know why those women said this. Because this is a very happy day for your husband. And you started on a sarcastic note. Just in communication, there are two things. There's there are three things about communication. There's tone. And that's why sometimes when a couple complains about their spouse to me, they say, Pastor, this is all I said. I said, I heard all you said, but I didn't hear the tone in which you said it. Because the tone can be a game changer. So there's tone, there's timing. And there's also the choice of words. So just imagine David had a very good day and she disagreed with something. And all she said was this. See, see what she said. <laughs> she said. She said, oh, the king in a sarcastic way. Oh, the king of Israel was glorious today. And next thing. Who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the little girls and the servants has one of the vain as an vain persons as an area boy shamelessly he said your my husband did this shamelessly oh wow uncovered himself and david said unto michael because michael said you know what the way you dance today you dance shamelessly and david said unto michael <laughs> he said unto michael david was blunt and harsh then what did David say to Micah? He said, it was before the Lord. You know, that I can't just, I can't just get away from. Because Micah should have known because Micah's father was spiritual for at least a bit. He said, it was before the Lord that I was dancing. When people see what you see, you know why they don't understand you? Because they don't understand before who you are doing what you're doing so they see the tears and they wonder why are you so emotional and crying they don't understand it's before the lord i was crying they see you pray the way you pray and scream he said my screaming is not before man it's before the lord they see you bring your fight and your offerings and bond offering and they wonder why are you so wasteful and not thinking straight he said it's before the lord i'm giving my tithe and my offering so the reason people don't understand you sometimes is that they can see what you do but they can't see before we are doing it for glory to God I said glory to God so the Bible says this it said it was before the Lord and before all of his house <laughs> then David now became petty the first sentence was good he became petty he said he said it was before the Lord 
which chose me before your father oh that was that was nasty because he began to send that back home praise the lord he said he was a follower that chose before your father and before all of all his house to appoint me ruler over the house of israel wherefore i played before him and i will yet then he said something that was also he said i will yet the vow he said you think i'm radical you think i've given offering he said i'm going to go extra crazy he said i'll yet be more vow than this and be based in my sight and of the handmaids which i have spoken of of them i will have honor then verse 23 was all shocked me and michael the daughter of saul had no child unto the day of our death so let, let me bring this together the major problem here is this is the way they saw things in different way hey why did michael talk that way michael was a king's daughter she was raised by the best british royal training school so so how was michael michael was raised she was you know so she knew how to stand like a princess she stands like this this is how princess stands and when she walks she carries the back always carries the back on one hand and waves the other hand and waves the other hand and and when you ask her michael a question he said yes please can i have a can i will give a response this is the stand of the palace and the issue you know that's a response because how she was brought up so when she saw David dancing, she couldn't believe because that's not royal dance. She, she had gone to finishing school. That's the way royalty dance. Dorothy don't dance in a certain way. But David was a village boy. He was raised up in the bush. He spent all his life in the bush. He doesn't know that the royal dancers, oh, oh, oh. David gets, hey, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. He, you, know, you know, everything was just dancing. He, he, could just, he would just, and his sketch would show. And the reason I'm saying so is this. Sometimes the biggest problem in marriage is what we call right. It's what we call this is okay. In David's eye, David felt as if this is me just praising God. In Micah's eye, you can praise God, but you were actually stupid. And they had, a, and, and you know something to show how tough that fight was. I didn't like how Micah, someone said, What was wrong? really from the bible bible says michael was wrong so i said how do you know that because who got a curse and i think the reason why michael was wrong was this because of the wrong thing david did he despised what he was doing it to she did she forgot the god in it and god says you shouldn't have touched that and sometimes when something goes wrong in the church remember the god in it Remember the God in it. Because, what, see, if you read the statement very well, Michael was just really saying that I want my husband to be respected. I don't want people to talk down my husband. I don't want my husband to just be like a nobody, just trying to say this is what the decorum is. But the way it came out, it's not enough to say the right thing in marriage. It must be said the right way. The problem with Michael is this. And how do you know Michael was wrong? Because God sees the whole story. We just see what a man wrote here. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, when David danced, Michael despised in his heart. And that was a heart issue. It was not just what she said. It was what the heart said. And, and, and why, is, why are marriages this way? Because sometimes most couples think they cannot even agree on what is right and what is wrong. So there's a big fossil. And, and David became petty. How did that become petty? If your wife said you didn't dance well and all of those kind of things, why not, she's done the wrong thing, why not explain to her, you fell for sent her to her father. You say, you see, that was why your father was dethroned. Because he was too proud. That was why your brother, that's why your brother could not be king. Can you imagine how petty David was? But what was causing it? What was causing was because the, there was no agreement of what dignity and praise and worship is like. That's what it is. Because it was agreement, his wife will have understood and the husband will understand, but there was no agreement. And what I'm saying this, this is what I'm saying this. Because the biggest issue with marriage is disappointment. One of the biggest issues, not the biggest. One of the biggest is disappointment. Disappointment. And one of the things strong marriages have done over time is this. Strong marriages know how to handle disappointment. So how does that moment come? Everybody comes to the marriage and, 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 it's, and it's so difficult because when you are in the disappointing marriage, you will lose passion with time. Who knows what I'm talking about? Yeah, you will. When you're in a disappointing marriage, you will, feel, you will feel unfulfilled with time. And 
what makes a disappointment can vary. For example, when you saw how Michael responded to what David said, what was he saying? She was just totally disappointed that David would dance that way. I'll give an example. And let me say this quickly. Let me just say this here because this will help everyone. Because now that we're talking about disappointment, <laughs> to fix disappointment in marriage, you have to do three things. Two of them are similar. Change the outcome you want or change your expectation. Then the second thing you have to do is this. And this is not, it's not about marriage, it's about any kind of relationship at all. If you have a relationship where you feel disappointed, just change your expectation or outcome. The second thing is this. When you feel disappointed, what do you do? Focus on what you can do to get the outcome you want. The challenge is that when people feel disappointed, the hurt, the hurt they have, they, they begin to act and talk out of the hurt and real things. I was just thinking of if David was dancing and Micah saw him and Micah wanted him to dance with dignity, what should Micah have done? Micah should have just jumped to the dance floor and held his hands and make him dance in a certain way. What would happen? David automatically would just followed suit. But Micah was so hurt. If you see the things that Micah said, he, it showed he spoke from a place of hurt. Disappointment. Let's give an example. Men say things like, <laughs> he said, man is very angry, disappointed. He said, Pastor, my wife doesn't know how to cook. Wow. I feel bad. I said, how long has she known how to cook? He said, for the past five years. Hmm. What are you going to do? She must learn how to cook. But she has not learned in five years. Good. If I were you, you'd have to take my advice. I'm disappointed. Somebody is frustrating me, I will change my expectation. Because at the end of the day, it's not the food, it's not that I want my wife, it's not who cooks the food really, it's the fact that I want good food, yes or no? So what should I do? If I'm disappointed, what will I do is that I will go back and say, let's go and get a chef. When I get a chef, oh, <laughs> you hear that sister say hallelujah. I know brothers don't like it right now. See, brothers, I'm saying this for your peace of mind's sake. That's the truth. Because every day you will come home angry. You will come home angry. You will come home angry. Small thing, food will destroy your marriage. Listen, let me tell you something. How do you know if you can cook or not? All you need is food in your stomach. Yes or no? So, you get a chef. And the chef cooks the food. And when the chef cooks the food, you've solved it. What you've done. The reason why some men say, I can never allow a chef cook my food is this. Expectation expectation the wife should cook the food is expectation but that will frustrate you and i told you that when you're disappointed what to do is that ask yourself what can i do right now to achieve what the result i want and all the ladies are very happy say amen, amen. that's good what about when a lady says something like you know i don't know why my husband loves to share bills Oh, praise God. Amen. amen. Brothers, amen. amen. Yeah. yeah. Is that, I don't know why my husband loves to share views. The reason why is that you guys end the same. Sometimes the woman even ends higher. And the guy says that, hey, this load is actually too much. I, I know your expectation was to marry a man that was a, was, was a financial hawk organ that can chest all the financial bills and school fees chest it, you know, house rent box it, you know, um, vacation slam it. But unfortunately, you married someone that was not financially strong. It doesn't have six pack at all. So here you are, you're always frustrated. Why do I have to do it? Why do I have to pay? The reason why you're frustrated is because you refuse to you what? adjust your expectation. That, oh, I didn't marry a financial hawk organ. I married a financial dwarf. Or a financial middle-sized person. Or a financial just okay person. How do I fix it? So, without you fixing that, you, you, you would you see the bomb. See, just imagine how dancing became a curse for David and Micah. That Micah never had the child she died. Imagine that simple thing. I'm only saying this because when you know what causes trouble in marriage, you will be surprised. Something as small as toothpaste. One time a couple told me, he said, tell my wife. He said, my wife presses from the middle. Hey, hey, how can you be pressing paste from the middle? Ah, you'll just be wasting the pace. And it's just, you know what I told him? I said, that 
Can two of you have two different toothpastes? One time, me, me and my wife had a big fight. You wouldn't believe this. Over what? Closing the toilet door when you're in the toilet. When I say big fight, we spoke over it for it was about like two years. So after two, you're like, nah, nah, nah. Wait. My wife said, no, 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 no. I, I feel choked. Why should I close the toilet door? But I said, the toilet's in the room. So if you're doing number two and you're in the toilet, it will be moving into the other room and I'm there. And she said, but I feel choked. I said, but toilet doors are meant to be closed. Then my wife asked me, said, who said so? That where is that law in the Bible? I said, really? I need to find out in the Bible to convince you. But, but the issue is, is disappointment. Let, let me show you something. Can, can I get a couple? I, I want to give out a gift to a couple today. Where, where's a couple here? So a couple at the back. Any couple at the back? Let me see. You want a gift? Sister and your husband, come. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Come here. Yeah, come. Come with your wife. Wait, so we come. I, I have gifts for you. I, I just feel like being a blessing today. Yeah. Do I need to help you come up? Okay. Yes, your sweetheart too. Exactly. That's all you know exactly so this is your gift don't open yet no no why are you stand i want to stand like this exactly so we can you can even take off your face marks just for the illustration what's this gift thank you and this is your gift so you open your gift and i can you know because i i kind of see and tell me how you feel. That's nice. <laughs> you hold on to my good hold. Okay. Hey, how do you feel? It look good. It look good, yeah, yeah, yeah. Open your gift. You can check it out. Just check it out, yeah, okay. You can open it. I should take it out. Yeah, let me take it. You can open it. Open, open check what is inside, you know. Okay, check, I mean, check, check the other. Yeah. Nothing what? There's nothing inside. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't help you. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing inside. Uh, really? So how do you feel about that? But there's at least a shoe. There's something inside here. Have you seen this one? Like, how do you feel? You, they put the microphone in my. Okay. How do you? How do you feel? Since then, how do you feel? I feel disappointed. <laughs> You know, the, the, you know what I'm saying? So these are some people's marriages are ah, some handsome on the outside, six pack is empty, praise God. <laughs> praise God. These are some people's marriages are ah, let me help you. Let me help you. Like, like oh wow, this am this what a much. This is like a big designer, big designer. The guy looks like a big person. Six pack spoken, impeccable British English, but uh, uh, empty. These are some ladies. Ah, uh, look at that yellow skin. You can see it's yellow, yellow. You know, oh my God! Oh no! Wow! Oh wow! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know why this thrives in marriages? Because our culture values content, packaging of our content. Yeah, because. We're in a culture, so you, you know the people you follow for their marriages, not the people that have nice marriages, but that look like they have nice marriages. Instant marriages. Oh, see how they put their body on Instagram. Oh, all the perfect couples always have six pack. A lot of people have zero pack and have perfect marriages. Because our culture, our culture looks a lot at the packaging. Before you say marriage is good, look inside, open. That's why when you want to date, leave what it looks like. Look inside. Check, check, check. The car can be borrowed, praise God. Check. <laughs> praise the Lord. 
all she may have may just be that skin praise god check more than the skin color thank you so so watch this now watch this now so in the so these are marriages is so she you can see why she disappointed but she didn't even come to church with the expectation of a gift but she's disappointed because she thought she was getting something and everything is empty so the question is this so once your marriage is very disappointed you will be very unfulfilled thank you you can take it to your seat they'll pick it from your seat thank you you can take the microphone also just put it off let me okay i can take this from you thank you so you, you see the expectation is a problem so you you're, you're saying that um, he should know how to cook so question when you experience disappointment your husband should not to pray should be the family priest yes or no yes but when it's not what do you do so when people are disappointed they keep pushing and pushing and it moves from disappointment to frustration but you're disappointed this is what you should do two things you should do change your expectation or outcome and in the moment when you feel disappointed when you feel hurt let me tell you something it's because in church that she get that way if she was outside church and someone get that kind of guilt you're like what is this because you say, what am i get, getting sugar for because when you feel disappointed what you should ask yourself is this what can i do right now to see achieve my outcome so for example for example she says she can cook what can i do right now your, your your outcome is food right what can i do right now to get the outcome i want because it's difficult to be happy in a disappointing marriage do you know what i'm talking about it's difficult to be happy in someone's relationship it's difficult to be ha happy just it's just difficult so you need to ask yourself because the thing is this the more you get disappointed the more that someone pulls you apart and it kills your passion and i'm saying so because of the next thing i want to say which i'm going to close the six phases of relationship so if you want your relationship to do so well where, where are my choir ladies are we getting ready right now if you want your relationship to do so well this guy's going to do so well this guy's going to do so well the way he does well is this you need to ask yourself what's the type of relationship i want because that's what even causes disappointment and you know disappointment what's the type so what is the type of relationship i want so what i did for you is this i just help you define faces or levels of relationship so that you can be like oh that's what i want so three things you need to know what i want you need to know where you are and ask yourself how do you get there so do you notice something Micah knew what she wanted in the husband i want a man that is very respectable but she never discussed it the way for her to get there landed at her curse very bad the way she wanted it landed at her curse so where are the six stages where are you ladies let's go let's go let's appreciate them as they come forward one person is missing yep patricia are you joining us So there are two there, there are six stages that there, your relationship is going to be one of these six places and why i'm saying this is that this is why i'm saying this you know this is why i'm saying this so that you can know where your relationship is and what do you do so if you know what you want which is the first thing what type of relationship do you want you know why this is important i spoke to a lady some time ago and she told me that I, I want to be so intimate with my husband, like we five and six. I want to relationship where we don't hide anything with each other. I said, that's good. So you know what you want at least. I said that. The second thing is that, what do you have to be for to make that happen? I said, he said, what do you mean? I said that people that have such deep intimacy, what do, who are they? I said, number one, such people are very forgiving. Because if you're not forgiving, you can't have deep relationship. I said, yes, that's true, that's true. I said, on a scale of one to ten, where are you in forgiveness she said honestly pastor 1.5 i said oh wow so you want this but you are that the second thing is that people i said that people like that are very vulnerable because that's what makes you intimate you are very open and vulnerable he said oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i said on a scale of one to ten where are you with that he said 2.5 i said can you see you keep telling what the other person should be but you are not the person they can be vulnerable with so some of you say hi i want a man that i want a man that can be open with me with his finances but people only open up about their finances when they trust the father you help them manage it well not spend it well i said manage it well so the first time i told her i got a 10 million deal and you said ah i bought gold for my friend he's 1.5 million i know i should not tell you again 
So what is happening with marriage is that people want a type of marriage, but the type of marriage puts a demand on you to become a type of person. You cannot run for, you cannot want to be a marathon champion and not live a certain lifestyle. You cannot want a type of marriage and not what and not be a type of person. I hear women always complain, my husband is not spiritual. Lady, are you spiritual? I said, why don't you come to church? He says, my husband. Can you imagine? Why don't you come to church? He's my husband. Why don't you come to church? He's my husband. You don't do next level. He's my husband though. Everything is your husband. The type of marriage you want will determine the type of person you'll be. So the thing, let me tell you what marriage, let me tell you where this gets tricky. This is why marriages don't improve and this has to improve your marriage. If you know the type of marriage you want, you have the mental picture, you will know what you'll be doing to become the person so you will hear marriages saying that i'm working at this i'm working at this i'm working at this because why am i working at that to become that person so let me show you six levels of relationship oh this is good the first level that's the first level electric lover that's the first level when i call your level just step out electric lover step out what is electric lover? <laughs> What's electric lover? In this relationship, they are like soulmates. There's deep connection. There's deep love. There's intimacy. It's sexy. It's fiery. It's fulfilling. It's fun. It's playful. It's enjoyable. There's a spark. Just a relationship every person dreamt about at 18. Especially their girls. Praise God. Relationship where you cry, he cries. Where you laugh, he laughs. In this relationship, what listen, this the pace is the same. This relationship you see in movies. But very few people are here. Very few. The one that is more common among successful marriages is the next one. So the first one is electric lover. So you need to tell me where you are. You need to write it down so I can mark yourself. Elect the second one is this. Settled lover. Settled lover, step forward. You need to, leave, you need to kind of leave the video also so that, uh, you know, I've seen that. Settled lover, step forward. The live feed, I mean. Settled lover. Who is a settled lover? This is a relationship of most of our parents. When is a good relationship? There's commitment. There's love, there's everything is done, but there's everything is good. But that passion, that friendliness, that friendliness is no longer there. You know, as a matter of fact, when you see all the people in our culture that are very friendly and friendly at 70, like why are they acting like children? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Because you know, you see, because because all of a sudden in this kind of marriage. They are not, see, they are not unhappy, but they are no longer passionate. So, that friend of, let me just take, see you, I want to steal your meat. I want to steal this. I want to, no, 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 you can, in this kind of marriage, you know, we all respect each other's boundary. It works well. And, and unfortunately, this is where most marriages are. Especially Christian marriages. This is where we are. It's, it's, it's not bad, it's not good. But it's really good, actually. The, let, me, let me say that. It's good. Then the third kind of marriage, the third kind of relationship, not marriage, right? the third kind of relationship is what is the functional lover. Functional lover, step forward. What's functional lover? This is when it gets bad. What's the functional? Is the roommate person. Who is the roommate? You are under the same building, but there's no more chemistry. The conversations, the conversations have now become what? The conversations have now become very functional. Do you want to eat? Yes. What do you want to eat? Jollof rice was it good it tasted nice thank you i'm off to the office i'm back your sister came i gave her money the children need school fees i will pay you know the, it's functional now it's function in those kind of relationships most of the time there's something else that is holding them together like children most of them some of them hold them together like fear maybe the man thinks if i leave this will happen or the wife thinks if i leave this will happen like fear functional relationships hallelujah question is where are you the fourth kind of relationship is this <laughs> so in this relationship they are disconnected emotionally in the first relationship they have similar pace in the second relationship they have pace but their pace are different in the third relationship they don't have pace at all that is connected the fourth relationship is this it's a checked out lover checked out lover step forward 
What's the check that lover? I'm in the same house with you, but I'm not there. I've checked out in my mind. As a matter of fact, the checked out lovers are those that say, I know any moment I will. They are planning to leave. They are just looking for the best opportunity. They are just waiting for him to beat them. When he beats me, I know it's over. I'm just looking. Hey, hey, very, any small thing, I will soon leave this house. It's a check. Because emotionally, they've checked out their body. Their mind is already somewhere else, but their body is still there. Don't stop hitting your husband. I, I, I can see it. Check that lover. When you saw Micah and David, what do you think they were? I think they were somewhere here, functional. So as soon, they, they only fight around function. It's when you don't pay school fees that we fight. It's when you don't behave like a king that we fight. When you don't cook, we fight. We don't fight for intimacy. We don't fight that. We don't fight for, you know, you don't look at me, look at what I wore. Ah, you didn't tell me I was sexy. You know, that kind of thing. You know, you, you don't even think of it again. And the fifth relationship, step forward. It's the broken lover. This is the one that's just left the relationship and is hurting. And is making all is this a stage where they begin to make all kind of policy and philosophy? Men are dogs, women are this. Marriage is just come. What is wrong with this? It, this is the place where people are very vulnerable, and they're very vulnerable because they are hurting and they are opening themselves to a lot of things together. And some of you know people like that. So they become, see, this is, this, is, this is the stage you must be the most careful because this is where you are the most open. This is where you start saying that, God, why did God do this to me? Why did God do that to me? Because it's a broken lover. Because when you're broken, you are very easy to absorb information and, and change policy. Change mindset, rather. And the last one is this. Last one. Uninterested lover. And this is the one that lies to himself. I'm not in a relationship and I don't want to be in a relationship. I don't want to care about a relationship because I don't want a relationship. And the reason why they're so so because the uninterested lover is the one that's found peace where he is, even though the peace is false. And what he see, the biggest problem of the of this lover is this: is what is fear. That the peace I have, I can come up at any time. I can eat anything. I can wear anything. Spend anything. Nobody's harassing me. This peace I have, I don't want to what? Negotiate it. But guess what? The truth is that this person is living a lot of fear. What's the fear? That if I lose control of my singleness or being alone, I'm not sure I'll be happy. And that person lives in a lot of fear. And that's why he's thinking that way. You hear me? Thank you. God bless you. All of you online, you have to type it there and say, which one are you? Question, write in your paper. Which one am I? Hey, right. Where are we right now? Hey, right, right, right. Write in Jesus' name. Get out your phone. Write. Don't just listen to your sermon. It's a practical class. Why must you write? Look at this. This is how you must write. Because if you know where you are, so if this is the ultimate relationship, if you know where you are, you can begin to know what steps to take to get somewhere else but the point is that see if you want to use a gps the gps is going to say where are you going you know where you're going to electric lover question where should i use your current what location because if you know the problem if you are not honest with yourself you can never go forward where are you and you know the thing if you're a woman this is where a woman is I'm here but in 24 hours i'll be there <laughs> that's how women think about it because where you are even determines how long it takes you when you put in the address in gps it said it will take you you'll be at your location in three hours 30 minutes based on where you are and this is why you cannot say someone is single someone is not single because everybody is single or married but we are different faces so it's the growth path and curve is different hey are you here? Yes, where are you? Because where you are will determine your next step. And that's why next Sunday will be very hot. As we finish. Where are you? One brother pointed, he said, I'm here. Because each of them have their own problems and advantages. And each of them have their own next steps. Yes, so 
So if you're here right now, we can't just say that this year you will marry. It might be too job, a long term for you. It's not even marry you need at this period. Father, let me break my fear. Someone says, I need a man, I need a man. But you are a broken lover. The problem with broken lovers is this. If they give you a man, you break him again. Because the people that hurt people are people that already hurt. You know, the, which, who, who knows the most difficult to change amongst all of these six stages of relationship? Who knows the most difficult to change? Which one? Which one? The what? I can't hear you. Want to go? What? Yeah? Oh. Some people in front said set to. Do you agree with that? If you agree, raise up your hands. Okay, which one do you agree with if you don't agree? Which one? Which is more difficult to change? What? 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 Gentile? Checked out. Checked out. You know what I really think? I think the most difficult is this one. You know why? This is the only relationship where the need for improvement is not obvious. Other ones know they have problem. This is the only relationship they say that something is wrong. You know, because this is the, let me, you understand. For men, natural men, African men, this is our type of relationship. This is the dream. It's the women that think of this one. So, once a man gets here, I'm not saying what is right or wrong, I'm just saying what's reality. He goes, I've gotten home. The man is saying, ah, you're not even grabbing me again. Don't come in. He says, ah, ah. <laughs> like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> We've been married for a long time now. You'll have left all this thing. <laughs> man says, I want to try. He says, let me go with you. Go with me. Every time, go with me, go with me, go with me. Ah, ah, are you not tired of going with me? Ah, let me just be myself. Because at that marriage, nothing is wrong. Only that the passion and the fondness is gone. It's difficult to improve with 70%. To 100 percent but when you are f9 it's it's very it's very difficult the question so this is the question today want to close i ready to close you want to close no we should stay right i, I knew it i figured but that's why you're going to come next sunday praise god because if i give you everything right now what you're going to come next sunday this is a question first question what do you want see let me tell you something i'm not even saying you should want this but what do you want because i can't want for you because whatever you want determines the work you're going to put in because someone say i want a passionate relationship passionate relationship means to be forgiven do you want to forgive it means to be disrespected because the person that is closest to you disrespects you the most where are you so when you know where you are like GPS, enter your location, enter your destination. When you enter where you are and where you are going to, the next thing is this. It will tell you the amount of time it will tell. Then the next you say, here an instruction. Turn right, turn left, go certain, keep to the ramp, turn left, 400 meters on the right. But the point is that, are you willing to take instructions that will build you to the next level? So when it says, turn left, Share the bill. He said, hey, I don't want that one. When he said, cook for hey, I don't want that one. So it's not what you want, it's the path you are on that leads to destiny. When he says, forgive her and pray for us, I'm not going to pray for anybody in this house. Anybody that cannot pray for that, she will be open to stand attack. I can't come and kill myself. Amen. Amen. Let's close with this story. I just listened to this story. One of the most beautiful love stories in the Bible was the story of Joseph and Mary. Do you know what it means to marry someone that is pregnant for who you do not know? Many of you never read the romance and the small stories. Do you know what it means to marry someone to, for, to be pregnant for who you do not know? And all of a sudden you say you dreamt? But do you know the reason why Joseph came on board? Because all of a sudden, 
All of a sudden, this is what God did. This is how, this how God changed the marriage of Joseph from, from the Joseph man from crashing. What he changed was this. He just gave them what? He just gave them a picture of a common future. Mary will be the mother of Jesus and you will be the man that raised God. And Jesus said, are you okay with that? He said, I want that in my life. He said, go for it. How you reunite marriages is this. Once you have, once you choose the marriage you want, marriage you want, step forward. If that's what you want. Go back. If that's not what you want. Marriage you want, step forward. Marriage you want, step forward. If that's what you want. Once you get, it's not about, it's to get behind the marriage you want and go for it. And that's why you, all of you that are single, congratulations. You know why? I always say something to all the single people. All of us that are married, we've bought our cars already. All we can do is to change the color and change the engine. The car has our own. All of you that are single, you are in the car shop. You can buy anyone you want. Cadillac, Picanto, anyone you, you can even test drive anyone you want. But once you buy... Once you buy, it's bought. Once you buy, it's bought. <laughs> Hope you said I'm bought. Yeah, you're yeah, bought. <laughs> uh, glory to God. You're yeah, bought. Handsome, you're bought. <laughs> Deal concluded. Even insurance is done. Praise God. But all we can do is change. The question today is this. I know you want something. What do you want? Then what do you have to do? Next week will be really powerful. Did he bless you today? Yes, Before we close, and this is why it's good to marry a Christian. Because once you can't marry a Muslim, it's not good to marry a Christian. This is why it's good. Because you marry someone that wherever you are, God can touch him and push him. God can touch him and push him. Just imagine if Joseph was not, a, was not a Levite. How would God speak to Joseph? Always marry someone that God can talk to. Because sometimes what you are saying will not be enough. It will just be what God said. There was no ex- Listen, there was no way Mary will make Joseph see that this pregnancy is not somebody. But when an angel... But why did Joseph receive an angel? Because Joseph himself was a Levite. He understood spiritual faith when he says, hey, this is what the Lord is saying. Joseph understood scriptures, revelation, prophecy. He says, I receive, Lord. And the Bible says, to show how much you receive, he never touched Mary until Jesus was born. That was the commitment he made. And that's why you must watch out for spirituality. Someone said, how do you know people speak that spiritual? Ask them, do you go to church? Who will tell you, I don't go. Of course, he will say, I go to church. Do you pray? You say I pray. But that's now you know who is close to God. Watch out for their conversations. When they talk, you've been dating for three months, or known for three months. He has never said, Pastor said, I came back from church. You called me, so that I was praying. Oh, sorry, I have to give my tithe. He has not said all of this thing before. And you say he's a Christian. Take Christianity and wait on him. Praise God. Um, and I use small things to know how you love God. I use difficult things to know. So when they say fast, are you willing to fast? I use painful things to know how committed you are to Christ. I don't say you come to church. Everybody comes to church, including demons. So I said, oh, did you do the fasting? It may not be perfect. I'm like, did, did you tight last month? Because I want to know. Because it's the painful thing you used to know who is close to God or not. Can we pray? Thank you. God bless you.